Hi folks, this is John from Sharp Mountain Games, and today we're going to talk about superhero RPGs and how to design great adventures for them. Let's do it after the intro. So today we're going to talk about superheroes and superhero RPGs. So let's start off with the real question. Why superheroes and why now? Why is it on my mind? Well, superheroes are more popular than ever before. I mean, I know when I was in high school, if you were reading superhero comics, you know, that was kind of the geeky, nerdy, maybe even seen as immature thing to do. But nowadays, I mean, look at the movies. If you look at any upcoming movies, action movies, superheroes are very prominent. I mean, there have been three Ant-Man movies, and Ant-Man's a pretty minor hero when it comes right down to it, and he's got three movies. So obviously, they're very, very popular. In fact, more popular than fantasy movies, probably. So why now? I really think it's time to diversify. You know, there was a big hubbub with the OGL earlier this year. And a lot of people were saying about breaking the chain and, oh, they want to design new RPGs and things like that. And that's all great. But why do they all have to be fantasy? Just maybe it's time to diversify, break the chain from big company, um, play something else. But it's also important, I think, because when we play different genres and when we design adventures for different genres, it really stretches us as both game masters and... And as players, we have to think a little bit differently than, you know, how many spell slots have I used up for today? And of course, the absolute most important reason, it's fun. And I think you'll see that in some of the images I'm using here. Most of them are from Comic Book Plus, which only uses uh, public domain comics or post-public domain comics. So all the images or most of them should be either public domain um, or from Pixabay as well. Now, there are some challenges uh, in trying to start up a superhero RPG. I think one big thing just to get out of the way is there's no single dominant RPG system for superheroes. I mean, for fantasy, obviously, people say, well, I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons. And even if you're playing something different, maybe you're playing Pathfinder or I personally run basic fantasy, you'd probably tell people, oh, it's just like D&D or it's like D&D, but maybe with a simpler or a different rule system. But there isn't one of those, uh, there isn't that kind of name recognition for superhero RPGs. And I'm not going to recommend a specific system. You play whatever you, I would say play whichever one you have or you can get a hold of easily. I like really like the old Marvel one um, that TSR put out, I believe it was late 80s, early 90s. And I mean, I've adapted it. I've changed it around a bit to make it a little more, maybe more modern or a little more streamlined the way I like to run things. But if you like mutants and masterminds or you like something else, go right ahead. You know, as I said, I'm not going to specifically recommend a system. I think that's up to you, whichever one you would like. A real challenge also is selling it to your group. Because again, I'm talking about breaking the chain. We're very, very conditioned to only play Dungeons and Dragons, or only play dungeon crawl kind of adventures, I think, uh, for a lot of the hobby. Is it everybody? Of course not. But is it probably a majority? I mean, let's be realistic, yeah. So that can kind of be a, a thing. Now, one way you might want to consider selling it to your group is to say, hey, why don't we just run a one-shot? We don't have to, we're not going to get rid of our major campaign or our main campaign, but let's just run an evening of this, you know, because I need a break. And I think that's very reasonable as a game master to say that once in a while i need a break and i need to run something different for an evening or two um, i don't think that's unfair and i hope players are open to that and also i think a challenge for a game master is superhero adventures require a different adventure design philosophy in general it's not a strict dungeon crawl you know, in the old days, like Keep on the Borderlands, it was actually very easy for me to run a game. I'd say, okay, you know, you're starting out as first or second level characters. Uh, you need some gold or you'd like to level up or gain more spells. You know, here's a kobold layer. Here's an or orc layer. Let's go um, adventure there. And you didn't really need much more than that. But that wouldn't work really for a superhero game quite as much. Now, power level. There's some different options. Uh, one I would call street level, and that's um, characters like Batman or Spider-Man, where they're tending to fight um, villains who perhaps even could exist in the real world or just slightly beyond what could exist in the real world. I think there's a lot of um, good things to say about street level. 
first of all, there's a lot of role playing opportunities. You know, Batman was always talking to Commissioner Gordon or Spider-Man would have to um, deal with J. Jonah Jameson. And also, you know, if you're dealing with street level bad guys, you know, Batman would sometimes have to go into a bar and rough up some um, some local thieves and fences and things like that to try and get to the information about the big bad. So I think there's an awful lot of role playing opportunities um, for that. It's familiar. I think pretty much everybody uh, has seen, you know, the old Batman TV show. So we're very familiar with kind of that street level thing. I also think it's great for smaller groups. If you only have two or three players, I think you could do a lot worse than a Batman type game where you have maybe Batman and Robin or Nightwing or Batgirl, uh, Batwoman, whatever you like. And I think that would work really well because it would give everybody a chance to shine. Um, And as I said, it's very familiar. Now, then you get up to, I would say, kind of your Justice League or Avengers level, which is really good for larger groups where you can run it. You know, everybody has a different kind of hero. You have Wonder Woman and you have Superman and you have um, Aquaman and things like that or Captain America. One thing I think you're going to hit with a Justice League or an Avengers level game is a lot less secret identity scenes. So you may have a little bit less role playing, you know, with your supporting characters because you just, you don't see that as much. Usually these uh, folks are really, really busy with whatever kind of um, nationwide or world level threats. And you could do greater threats. You know, that's one thing on the street level. You're probably not going to be totally saving the world. You might save Gotham City. You might apprehend a villain. But you may not be defending the world from, um, you know, a really, really big bad like Dr. Doom. And then you can go even bigger, what I would call cosmic level, which is things like Thor, the Green Lantern Corps, the Silver Surfer. And of course, those are your biggest threats of all. However, one thing with those really, really big threats is I think that might be harder for an ongoing campaign. You know, can you really save the universe every single week? Um, That can be a little harder to think up new adventures, but certainly not impossible. Now, one thing I would say in terms of power level, and this is just from experience, is it's easiest if all the heroes are about the same power level. So if you're running street level, all the heroes should be about street level. One of the problems that you hit in terms of role playing that maybe you don't hit in movies and comic books, like with the Justice League, Batman's in the Justice League and so Superman. And they're obviously very different in power levels. And that certainly can work. I'm not saying it can't work. But sometimes it, what I found was a problem with, you know, when you're running that last big battle that you probably won in a superhero game you know batman just was not able to um land the same punches against you know really really big opponents so sometimes your batman type character ends up fighting you know a minion and i I don't think that's as much fun if they're fighting a minion and somebody else is fighting you know a dr doom or a thanos level character here's one thing that's again i we said that the design philosophy is different for superhero games In a regular game, you don't always necessarily need a clear-cut villain. Um, You know, you can just, your orcs are your villains. Uh, It's nice if you have it, but it's, I think it's much, much more critical in a superhero game. And your villains kind of help determine the tone of your game. So if you want a gritty street-level game, you could have the Kingpin. And certainly um, the Joker in his modern incarnation in the comic books can be very gritty and very, you know, evil and murderous. Um, so somebody like that can certainly work as a gritty villain and that's going to be the tone of your campaign, you know, where maybe they find somebody who's been killed by, um, the mob or somebody who's been killed by the villain. You could do magical villains, uh, like Dormammu or Mordu, I believe it was for the Legion of Superheroes. And, um, you know, then you can certainly bend reality as much as you like, or, you know, that's, you can even do a whole magical campaign like Dr. Strange. Then I think there's our classic villains that most of us think about when we think about um, superheroes, Dr. Doom, Darkseid. And notice I have the Joker in there again, because you don't have to play him as super gritty and murderous. Maybe he has more um, lighthearted um, uh, goals. And of course, you can go silly if you want. And I think that'd be fine maybe for a one shot. I don't think it would work for an ongoing campaign. But your silly villains like um, Vincent Price as Egghead and all the other Batman 1966 villains, you know, certainly that could be a a real hoop, but probably just for an evening or a one-shot game. Now, adventure design. Here's one suggested template 
you know, because you might be thinking, and I know myself, I think, oh, how would I do a game like this? Sometimes it helps to have structure. And this structure is very much based on, you know, many, many comic books. You definitely should have a call to action scene. Maybe all of a sudden some animals have escaped from the zoo. Well, who let them out? Or is somebody mind controlling them? And of course, you know, the heroes have to round up these animals without hurting the animals or letting them hurt bystanders. Maybe there's a bank robbery and the robbers, you know, they're street level um, bad guys, but they have technology that they really shouldn't have. Like it's really advanced technology. So whatever you do, though, I would say that first scene should be start with action. I think that's good for any um, role-playing game or role-playing scenario, but it's even more critical for superheroes. You know, get them going within the first few minutes. Now, you can take a few minutes to discuss the the setup and all that, but they should be throwing punches and fireballs and flying around, you know, right at the very beginning, if possible. Then after that, you need your pause. You need your investigation. Maybe one of them has detective skills. Maybe one of them has science skills and they can analyze, oh, where'd this technology come from or where could it have come from? Or if they don't have that, you know, maybe they can do some role playing. They can get in touch with the police or police scientist who's going to help them um, analyze this stuff, you know, to try and lead them to that next stage. Now, I would suggest maybe the next stage isn't right going right after the big bad. Maybe rather, you know, they think they're going after the big bad or they have a lead, but they're going to fight the minions at at this point. And then, you know, it gives you another action scene and then it can lead them to maybe, well, where is the big bad at? It's just to kind of have a, you know, a little pause in the thing. So you're not rushing right ahead to to the end here. Now, the very end could be the big bad's lair or their major plan. So this is your big cinematic action um, scenes. Now, I would say if they're infiltrating the big bad's lair, that absolutely could be like a dungeon crawl. It could be very, very familiar for you at this point. Um, they could have to, you know, defeat some guards. There might be a trapped trapped hallway, you know, that's trying to kill them on the way. You could have the um, supervillain's lab where maybe they'd find things they can use. Or maybe the supervillain has a zoo or some people who are prisoner there. And then eventually lead to their main layer. So this stage, if you're going with a big bad layer, if you want to keep things on familiar grounds, as I said, it can absolutely be like a site-based adventure or a dungeon crawl. But also it could be more like a major plan. Maybe they're trying to steal a rocket or trying to steal a bomb or something. And you certainly could work some other scenes in here. Perhaps the heroes have to um, talk to the military or talk to military people and convince them to let them in to say, look, there's a problem here. And, you know, of course, uh, any kind of security isn't going to want to just let strangers into their facility or they might even have to sneak past them to try and see what the villain is up to, what they're trying to steal it. As I said, it could be a bomb or it could be some piece of technology in a secret lab or a government lab. So those are all possibilities. Is this the only template? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But it give, if it gives you something to think about or for a first adventure, I think you could do worse than some kind of um, format like this. Now, here's some other considerations. Do you want to use existing heroes? And I've done this. You know, I've run games where we're playing characters from the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man and the Marvel Universe. And you can mix universe. There's no reason Batman couldn't be fighting alongside Spider-Man if you want to do that. Uh, one concern there is... You know, everybody has a favorite and everybody can't be Batman or everybody can't be Spider-Man. So that's just one concern if you want to use existing heroes. It's great that they're familiar, but it might be just as easy for sometimes to have a hero who's like Batman or like the Human Torch or uh, like Wonder Woman. And then the players can kind of bring their own um, sensibility and what they want for the character into the into the game. Lethality is an issue, and that may depend on which system you're using or whether you're running a gritty or some other um, other type game. I mean, really, for the most part, superheroes get knocked out. They don't necessarily get lethally killed or majorly damaged such that they can't fight. Um, so you have to think about that, whether you want to, you know, it's, it's a little different than, okay, you're dead at zero hit points. You could do it that way. It's up to you. But I think in terms of the flavor of comics... Um, usually, like I said, they're just knocked out or knocked down for a while. Moral code. 
something you might want to just, you know, if you have a session zero or you're like, I don't really have a full session zero, but sometimes I talk about things with my players beforehand, you know, you could on your Skype or discord, you might want to talk about and just stress, you know, that is this a case where, yeah, in this universe, the heroes kill the villains versus no, they try to bring them to justice, which is, you know, more in line with the traditional superheroes. Might want to think about some supporting characters. You know, you want your Lois Lanes, you want your Commissioner Gordons in there. Again, especially for your street level heroes, um, these are people they're definitely going to interact with. So just have a few ready. Not a lot. Three or four is probably plenty. Think about a one shot versus an ongoing campaign. If it's a one shot, you definitely want to give them, you know, the victory right then and there, and you can pull out all the stops. If it's ongoing, then it's perfectly good. Have your cliffhanger, you know, like the old Batman TV show, have your cliffhanger. So um, they're going to want to keep coming back, you know, and then you're going to build up to something, build up to that big battle. Another thing you can think about is maybe you want to break the mold. Maybe you want to do, you know, superheroes in a past setting, you know, like the first Wonder Woman movie, which took place during World War One, or you could certainly have one during World War Two. Uh, future settings, I think, are great for superheroes. Um, like the Legion of Superheroes. That's a personal favorite of mine. So those are just some things to think about. So here's where I'm going to end things with a plea to both game masters and players. Give it a shot. Try something different. Let's get out of the dungeon for a week or two. Now, here's some suggestions for game masters. If your group just isn't into it, or you know, more the group is not into it than into it, and you don't want to, you know, break up your momentum or you certainly don't want to ruin your campaign, just consider running it at an alternate time. I usually run on Thursdays. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, hey, Monday I'm offering a superhero game. If you're interested, let me know. And if you have just maybe one or two who are interested, that's a great time to try and recruit some new players. See if there's anybody else who'd be interested in giving it a shot. You know, maybe you have a, a friend who's a real fan of Marvel movies or DC movies or comic books. And here's the main thing. Let them have fun. Give them a victory. Now, let's say the dice or maybe even some of the decisions aren't quite rolling in their direction. That's fine. At the end, let them thwart the villain's plans. Just have the villain get away. Maybe it'll even have them coming back, you know, for another session if they have another chance to have a go at, at capturing that villain. So as I said, give superheroes a try and you can let me know in the comments what you think and what your experience has been running superhero games. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to check out the titles from Sharp Mountain Games, you can see our two in-print adventures, The Dwarven Pickup Truck and The Sky Tree at Amazon, Lulu, or DriveThruRPG. You can also check out our digital titles, which include adventures, map packs, new character classes, and character cards, and they're at DriveThruRPG or the Roll20 Marketplace. Wherever you like to shop, Odds are that we're there. So you know what to do. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. All the links um, to our products are in the description below. And thanks, and we hope to see you again soon.